Today in my continuing quest to see what the most obscure topic I can make a video about is, we're talking about the politics of Russian natural gas pipelines. Someone's New Year's resolution wasn't to get more views. Specifically, we're going to be looking at a new pipeline Russia's building that has America so worried Congress and the executive branch were actually able to work together to get something done? Oh man, that's when you know things have gotten out of hand. President Donald Trump signed a bill late this month imposing sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline. and This project was led by Gazprom, Russia's state controlled gas company. I mention that because this pipeline is a bigger deal than it probably sounds at first glance and affects the politics of quite a few countries. So what the heck is going on? Let's start by diving into the murky world of Russian economic data. Yes, yes, we've never had a recession. Data? No, you just take my word for it. Luckily for us, we're looking at legal exports, so they're solid numbers. Just over half of Russia's total exports are fuel variations, barely edging out Russia's second largest export, Rachel Maddow News Stories. So where are they sending that fuel? Well, it's mostly a who's who of European countries. All right, so they're selling a lot of fuel, and they're selling it to Europe. This leads to the obvious question: Uh, Russia? It seems like you're doing a pretty good job exporting gas to Europe right now. Why are you building a new pipeline? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, if this were any old pipeline, I probably wouldn't be covering it. But it has two important attributes that make it particularly controversial. First, the big one. A lot of gas is going through Ukraine at the moment. If this gas bypasses Ukraine, Russia has a handle to put a lot of pressure on Ukraine. And that's obviously been a reason for sanctions against Russia in recent years, uh, a reason for a lot of tension between Europe, the United States and Russia. Um, so this pipeline could uh, ratchet up that tension. And that's also one of the concerns of the critics of this pipeline. To understand this concern, we need to go back to the fall of the Soviet Union. Because boy, did that really hurt Russia's ability to sell gas to Europe. In the 80s, Russia was BFFs with the Ukraine, so why not build all of your oil exporting infrastructure through them? In Soviet Russia, we put all eggs in one basket. It's more efficient. The Ukraine won't turn their backs on us. The Soviet pipelines were laid across the Ukraine and Belarus, which were part of the empire. But they became independent nations that demanded transit fees and low priced energy supplies in exchange for maintaining Russia's energy supplies to Europe. Yep, Russia's intro to capitalism course was pretty rough. It quickly became apparent that if Russia wanted to do business with the EU, they'd either have to ditch their Ukrainian and Belarusian pipelines or well acquire the Ukraine and Belarus. Russia's final strategy was a little bit of A, little bit of B. Their first non-Ukrainian pipeline was completed under Putin in 2003. Instead of bringing natural gas to Europe through the Ukraine, this pipeline, the Blue Stream, brought it through Turkey in an incredibly circuitous route. Still, Blue Stream's capacity was dwarfed by the amount the Soviet-built pipelines could export to Europe via the Ukraine and Belarus. Then after that pipeline was built, there was really little advancement until 2011 when Russia took Belarus entirely out of the equation by obtaining full control of the Belarusian gas transit system in exchange for discounted gas supplies. Still, even with Belarus out of the equation, there was the holdout of the Ukraine who were insistent on maintaining control of their pipelines and charging for transit. So what do you do when transportation of natural gas gets too expensive? Well, Russia has raised the prospect of energy shortages in Europe after halting gas supplies to Ukraine. Unfortunately for Russia, Ukraine came out triumphant in two separate gas cutoffs because, as I said at the top of the episode, a major part of Russia's economic survival is selling gas to Europe. Twice in the 2000s, Russia cut off gas supplies to the Ukraine to try to bring it to heel. But without alternative export routes, such tactics were unsustainable. During the same period, Russia did introduce another game changer by opening Nord Stream 1. 
that pipeline would run parallel to the proposed pipeline we're talking about today, Nord Stream 2. Creative name. But we're back in 2012, and now there are two pipelines to Europe cutting out the Ukraine. You have the Blue Stream running through Turkey and Nord Stream, the one running through the Baltic Sea. Still, the sheer amount of gas Europe is buying from Russia is forcing them to continue sending the majority of the gas to the expensive Ukrainian pipes. It's at this point that the event most of you are probably waiting for me to get to finally happened. To what America is officially calling a Russian invasion of Ukraine. Russian troops spreading out throughout the uh, strategic Crimean Peninsula. As you can probably imagine, this was not great for the working relationship between Russia and the half of the Ukraine that continued to not be Russia. Now I'm not going to claim that gas was the primary motivator for that invasion because a lot of other things were happening, but it certainly had some advantages to their gas industry. The annex region had a ton of gas reserves and what do you know, they started building pipeline shortcuts through the annexed region to circumvent Ukrainian transport prices and save a ton of money on the back end. This invasion did really change the face of gas imports to Europe though. Because all of a sudden, new pipelines from Russia to Europe didn't seem like quite a great idea. Nord Stream 2, the pipeline of concern today, was put on ice, and European countries were trying to cut their reliance on Russian oil. Unfortunately for Russia, I think you know what that lack of new pipelines means. Hey Ukraine, it's your old pal Vladimir Putin. I know we're not on the best of terms right now, but... Like, you want to keep passing our oil to Europe? We kind of still need your pipes. The uneasy solution to this problem was Russia would no longer sell gas to the Ukraine, but the Ukraine said it will keep shipping fuel to Europe, strictly in line with the transit contract. I guess their contract didn't have a clause that nulled it in case Russia invaded and occupied half of their country. So European gas supplies were safe, and the Ukraine was still benefiting from jacked up transport costs. How did the Ukraine get their gas? Well, most of it came from its central European neighbors via reverse flow pipelines, who ironically sent back imported Russian gas molecules. Basically, it's like if my electric company refused to do business with me and instead I hooked up a bunch of extension cords to my neighbor's houses to keep my lights on. So this brings us back to today, because many are worried that this new pipeline would allow Russia to ship so much gas through non-Ukrainian pipelines that it would finally tip the balance of power in the already very fraught relationship between these two countries in favor of Russia. The one chip the Ukraine currently has is, if you really, really try to burn us to the ground, we can go all in and cut off a significant chunk of your state's revenue. Not sure how you could get much worse than occupying half of the country, but let's hope we don't find out. Many observers consider that reducing Ukraine's role as a transit state not only would deprive Ukraine of revenue, but also threaten Ukrainian security. Ironically, as of writing this story, a new news story has dropped. And what do you know, with Nord Stream 2 being all but guaranteed, the Ukraine and Russia have made a deal on gas transit. Of course, this deal was pretty one-sided considering Kiev fears being sidelined after the controversial Nord Stream 2 pipeline becomes operational and connects Russia directly with its top buyer, Germany. Unfortunately for the Ukraine, Russia has already signaled it would lower the amount of gas flowing through the Ukraine in 2020. The cuts are set to continue in the following years. So okay, Ukrainian security is the first reason people are concerned by this pipeline. The second reason is quite a bit simpler, which phew, I don't want this turning into a 10 hour Ken Burns documentary about Russian pipes. This other worry is... The uh, dependency from Russian gas uh, will increase drastically with this new pipeline, and that's the reason why they construct it. And uh, it contradicts, obviously, the European goals, not only of the energy union, but in the future we will see less gas demand uh, because of climate policy. And this is the reason why this pipeline is completely uneconomical. Yes, increasing access to Russian gas and cutting its price could make Europe more dependent on Russian gas. 
This has one person who has been conspicuously absent from this episode particularly alarmed. It was one and possibly the only issue Trump directly challenged the Russian president on, the energy market. We'll be competing. As you know, the United States is now, uh, or soon will be, but I think it actually is right now the largest uh, in the oil and gas world. So we're going to be selling LNG and we'll have to be competing with the pipeline. We don't want Europe dependent on Russian gas. We want them dependent on American gas, or as this administration now calls it, molecules of United States freedom. Boy, the Trump creative team really peaked with Make America Great Again. America has recently become a huge exporter of natural gas, and we have euro signs in our eyes. Of course, it's hard to compete with a pipeline when your main form of transportation is large boats. But by God, if there's energy at stake, America is gonna find a way. Because of this, America wants to keep as much Russian gas as possible flowing through the expensive Ukrainian pipes, so that we can compete on price. Because of this, we're using sanctions and political pressure to try to end this pipeline. Unfortunately, with a pro-pipe pressure campaign from Germany, a country that's really looking forward to the huge natural gas price reductions that are going to come from cutting Ukraine out of the deal, all the permits have been issued. If you want to know how United States administrative protests of this pipeline will go, watch a documentary on Standing Rock. The EU bureaucracy has made up its mind on this one on October 30th when the final holdout to Denmark grants a construction permit, and most of the pipe has now been laid. I'm sure Europe is definitely short term going to get some of the cheapest gas in the world though, as the ensuing battle for market share in their gas market gets fought between America and Russia. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube. First, I'd like to apologize for not posting a video the last two weeks. I was visiting my parents for Christmas. If anybody knows a good way to communicate with everybody when something comes up that's going to affect my production schedule, I'm all ears. Let me know about it in the comments. I'm going to start posting to my Twitter and Facebook with these updates if you want to follow me on social media. Links in the description. I'd also like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos, starting with my newest patron, Venkato Bopana. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlook to join this growing group of individuals by clicking the link in the description. Remember to subscribe because my new year's resolution is to get a thousand of you, and I'm so close right now I can taste it. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.